Mailbag time once again, talking about Grant Williams extension trading Peyton Pritchard and advice for people coming to visit Boston for the first time to check out a Celtics game. It's one of my most common questions, and I'm answering it right now on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team, step back. We gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corrales above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Prime time, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics, pod, home of the winners. B. Hey, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Thank you so much for making this show part of your regular routine, soon to be daily routine, back to daily. I'm doing it next week. The whole network starting back to daily a week after. I'm doing it next week. I'm done. I'm done with the three days a week. I'm coming back next week. I'm coming back hot. I'm coming back five days a week. And I'm staying five days a week until the end of the season, until the end of free agency, back into next August, back into whenever I decide to take a vacation. Because that's what you want, daily, free, fresh podcast, and I'm going to give it to you. I'm John Corrales. I cover the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. I've written a book called Boston Celtics All-Time All-Stars, and I'm heading into year number 16 covering the Boston Celtics, and it feels like year number one because I love it just as much as I always did, and I'm so happy to be doing this show for you. Today, it's a mailbag podcast uh, coming to you a little bit late because I went to the Bruno Mars show at Boston at the new MGM theater over there at Fenway. I mean, look, like Bruno Mars music or not, that dude puts on a show. He puts on a show. Very, very impressive. And I can see the parallels of that type of concert to NBA entertainment. Guys talk about being entertainers a lot of times. The level of endurance that it takes, the level of precision that it takes, definitely translates between any kind of showman at, at the you know high-end entertainment, those, those men and women putting together real high-end entertainment shows daily, every day. And basketball players, athletes, professional athletes putting together performances every day. Uh, it's, it's really, I can see the, the parallels. I can appreciate that. So that was fun. But for people who are hoping for a little bit of an earlier show on uh, Sunday heading into Monday, uh, sorry. It's, it's a little bit later than I expected, but fun night overall. Uh, fun night for a lot of people. People enjoying the beginning of football season. People enjoying a lot of things. WNBA finals have begun. So lots of fun out there. Lots of, This is a great month. September, October, great month for you know, overall. These are two of the best months on the calendar. Mailbag questions. Uh, full mailbag, once again, Just it's never not a full mailbag. I ask for questions at johncorrales.com slash mailbag if you want to send in your mailbag uh, questions. Uh, as the season begins, though, I will say it's it's a little tougher to get to the mailbags as other topics begin. I'll try to work those into more regular podcasts uh, or like sprinkle a question in here or there. But the off-season daily or, or Monday podcast where it's all mailbags tends to kind of slip a little bit. It, when the uh, regular season kicks in. Today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. Let's dive into this mailbag and start with uh, a bunch of questions. I, I don't have one specific question. I want to lump the dozen or so questions that I got about replacing Danilo Gallinari. Uh, people dropping, I mean, I, I don't even have time in the podcast to list all the names. Jeremy Lamb, Harry Giles, Jared Vanderbilt. Uh, Vanderbilt is somebody that Tom Westerholm has discussed on the podcast. He brought his name up, trying to poach somebody from Utah. I don't know if Utah is going to give him up because uh, they're they're looking to keep young talent, and I think that he might be somebody that they want to kind of keep and be part of the kind of good young core that they're trying to build. but. At, at this point, the way the rebuild goes, he's a possibility. But the, the question here is, uh, what what draft picks, what draft assets would Danny Ainge be looking for? But my overall answer to all of the questions that always begin, hey, John, what do you think about this guy? What do you think about 
so and so. What do you think about enter whatever name you want uh, as a replacement for Danilo Gallinari? The, my question, my answer is going to be the same across the board. They are going to start the season with what they have. They are going to go into the season and going to say, what do we have? What do we need after we decide what, what players uh, fit, what players are performing well, what players can step up in somebody's absence? They need to get those answers first before they just bring somebody in. And the answer is always going to be partly about financials, the tax money. You don't want to bring a guy in and be like, nope, doesn't work, cut him. Bring this guy in, nope, doesn't work, cut him. And you have dead money after dead money after dead money that even if it's $200,000 and you're paying exponentially whatever that amount is, the higher, the deeper the Celtics go into the tax, the more money that costs them. And I'll always say this. For you, for me, sure, whatever. Who cares? Spend the money. But for Wick Grosbeck and that ownership group and any ownership group and anybody laying that money out of their own pockets, it's meaningful. And they're not going to want to just throw it away. Signing guys and cutting, signing and cutting. So they know, and it's because that uh, Gallinari is a seventh, eighth man as important as he is or was to the plan, they have other options that they can try. And if Sam Hauser steps up and just becomes a viable option, then Sam Hauser's the guy. And you don't have to bring Carmelo Anthony in or whoever else is suggested. You just don't have to do that. So, they are just going to start the season and say, what do we have? What do we have in training camp? Who can fill this void? And then from there, there's no rush to sign Carmelo Anthony. There's no rush to trade for some of these guys. You see what you have. You figure out what you need. And the last thing you want to do is sign a big when you need a wing or vice versa. So no matter who you say, hey, what about this guy? The answer is going to be dependent on who steps up in the preseason? Who steps up in camp and says, hey, it's me. Your answer, it's me. The question you have, Sam Hauser, that's the answer. Or Noah Vonley, that's the answer, right? The, or Luke Cornett, that's the answer. Uh, whoever it is, these guys who are in camp are going to get a chance. Uh, and I'm going to fold in a question, just one of the the – things that people throw in there when you're using the TPE. I would just caution, uh, you know, there are plenty of places you can go to say, oh, who fits into the TPE? Don't bring in a name like Alperin Shingun as a TPE target because he's a young player for the Houston Rockets that has promise and they're not going to give him up in the TPE just for nothing. Even if it's another draft, they're, they're not going to do that. Guys who fit financially and who are good, and you say, I'd love to have that guy on this team. You always have to consider the other names, the other team, I should say, and what they're trying to bring in. Uh, the other question that I get all the time is about Grant Williams' extension. And this kind of ties into everything I've been talking about. Tons of questions about Grant Williams' extension. And they have until mid-October to get this done. Uh, this is the November, uh, the September 12th show, so they have a month and a few more days to get this, this thing done. They don't have to get it done now. Uh, there's, there's, there's a reason to get it done, which is you keep Grant and he's part of the plan and whatever. Uh, there's a reason to not do it. And part of the reason to not do it is you don't want to turn Grant into a poison pill. And the poison pill is what the Knicks did with RJ Barrett. If the Celtics don't extend Grant Williams, consider that Brad William, Brad Stevens extended Robert Williams, that he extended Marcus Smart, if he doesn't extend Grant Williams, what does that mean? 
if he doesn't extend Grant Williams, it, I mean, obviously it could mean nothing. Be like, hey, we're, we're just not going to get this done now. Let's wait until the next season. We couldn't come to an agreement. Let's wait until next season. Grant Williams has been signaling that he wants this done, and they could get it done. But if they don't, it could be that Grant Williams could be included in a trade. And the thing about Grant Williams being included in a trade is he represents value without the contract. And the new team could negotiate their contract with him. But when it comes to salary matching, you can include whichever players to match the salaries and Grant Williams as talent that doesn't make a lot. He's, he's on his rookie contract, but he's, he's value. He's low money, but high value in terms of what he produces at the money that he makes. So there is a scenario where he doesn't get his contract because the Celtics say, Hey, we want to keep our options open during the course of the season. If we give Grant Williams a, an extension, whatever that is, three years, 30, three years, 35, three years, 40, whatever you think the number should be giving him that extension, but trading him after he gets that extension, but still at the end of his rookie contract, what he counts for as far as salary matching is different for the team that gets him versus the Celtics trading him away. And the Celtics might just want to avoid that complication because now that means you might have to involve the third team. It's very likely that you would have involved the third team. So don't just like, if they don't get this done, it could mean nothing, but there's also a very real business element to it where if they make a a deadline day trade, or if they make some kind of trade between December and February, they want to include Grant Williams as a young player with promise, 40% three-point shooter now, whatever, whatever. They can try to sell the other team on, hey, we're giving you value, and you guys can hammer out the contract yourselves. That could be part of the thinking as to why you don't do that deal. They did the deal with Robert Williams because they didn't want to trade him. He wasn't going to be included in a deal. They did the thing with Marcus Smart because it didn't have the same impact on Marcus Smart. He wasn't a poison pill contract. Grant could be. It's just it's just a business thing. They might want to just keep their options open. So that's one reason why Grant might not get his extension. But if Grant gets his extension, then that means they never really had much intention of trading him. They believe in him as a part of the future, and they're at least keeping him for the next you know, year or two and they can revisit it next season. But uh, that that's kind of the, the contract situation with him up next Peyton Pritchard. Where does he fit in all of this? going to talk about that in just a minute. First betonline.net is your number one source for all of your football betting needs pro. They just started week one uh, in the books. Well, mostly there's still Monday night football and all that stuff, but uh, college, it's all there, plus all the other sports, whatever you want, uh, MMA, boxing, golf, MLB, playoffs are, are, are coming up, uh, everything, NBA when it comes back. Uh, Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. Obviously, football, NFL, college developments, matchups, news podcasts, all of that. So head on over to the website, betonline.net. Use your mobile device if you'd like. You can learn more about the trends and action. Bet online is where the game starts. Please gamble responsibly. Who do you think will be the most valuable player in the NBA this season? Locked on and bet online present the NBA top 50 most valuable players. It's all starting on September 19th. Who's it going to be? Steph, KD, LeBron, Jokic again, Giannis. Pick one of the big names. Tatum. Why not Jason Tatum? Check it all out on the Locked On NBA feed. You can check it out wherever you get your podcast. Starting September 19th, the top 50 most valuable players presented by Bet Online, Locked On and Bet Online, wherever you get your podcast. And the show is on YouTube. Let's get back into the mailbag where Joe asks Any way you see Pritchard getting traded? 
Love him, but too many point car point guards this way. Um, to do him a solid, would love to get him somewhere with minutes, even get him back home to Portland. Any way we can incorporate a TPE involving Pritchard in Portland, I I think that Pritchard, I mean, I, I don't think that he's going to be a Celtic for much longer. And is he, can you do him a solid? Yeah, you can do him a solid. I, I don't think he's in uh, do him a solid category. I think that he's probably, uh, he's just probably got to deal with wherever he goes. Can't, I don't think the Celtics are going to look at him right now and say, oh, man, we're just not enough space for you, man. Not enough minutes for you. Let's do you a solid and trade you to, I don't know, pick a team, Utah, with minutes available. Uh, I, I just don't think that they're going to do that for him specifically. Will they trade him? Sure. Uh, I think I can see him going in a trade with a pick to get somebody uh, at the deadline. I can see I can see him uh, separately going to a team like the Utah Jazz. I'm going to say Utah because Danny Ainge, uh, Danny Ainge drafted Peyton Pritchard. They're both Oregon guys. Uh, maybe Danny has a continued affinity for Pritchard and would love to just get a guy who works that hard on the team. Makes sense. Do the Celtics want to go and trade for maybe in that Jared Vander Vanderbilt kind of scenario? You say, Hey, look, let's, let's get, you want Peyton Pritchard back. You want, you want to get this uh, young hustling shooter out there. Everybody's going to love him. Then sure. We'll, you know, we'll give you Pritchard and we'll give you a second rounder and you give us Vanderbilt or something like that. Uh, I don't know if that's how it would work. I don't know if Danny Ainge would want more, if you'd want a first, a protected for whatever it is. But I can see Pritchard being moved. Uh, I would expect Pritchard to be moved. Uh, I He may finish the season with the Celtics. I'd be surprised if he started next season with the Celtics. Um, just because he's as good as he can be, just doesn't feel like he's he's going to be enough of a defender to justify him playing the minutes that he um that he might play during the regular season. He'd be great during the regular season and where where teams aren't going to necessarily pick on him relentlessly. They're going to still try to run what they run. Uh but in the playoffs when he becomes more of a liability, no matter how many shots he hits, I think he he has the, the the possibility of giving up just as many points on the other end. So, uh, yeah, I can see Pritchard getting traded. I definitely can see Pritchard getting traded. I I just don't. The Celtics aren't in a young guy mode. They need veterans. They need somebody who can perform, be versatile, play multiple positions. He cannot play multiple positions. He cannot defend multiple positions. He can barely defend. The point, like he's he's tenacious, and he'll get up there and he'll he'll work his butt off. But any point guard with size and any sort of shooting touch will shoot right over the top of him, and we've seen that. So, uh, as much as I I do like Peyton Pritchard, and I do think that he has some level of NBA future, he does have he just has vulnerabilities. Now this could all change, by the way. He could have come. He it's possible that. A month from now, I could be sitting here and saying, whoa, Peyton Pritchard, oh my God, he fixed a lot of stuff. He's such a good defender now. He's going down the Fred Van Vliet mode. He's such a, a good shooter. He's just automatic from 35 feet, um, he, whatever. It's possible that he can become a lot more than he's been. If he doesn't change, then I can see him traded. But I can also see a world where he's worked his butt off, he comes back, and there's other elements to his game and he he could stick around so it's not it's not just a it's not just a he's gone forget it it's certainly uh there's certainly a, a scenario where he could he could stick around but he would have to improve a lot and 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 really take some leaps forward hey look if he does that then oh my god amazing awesome good for the Celtics because he'll he'll be very helpful but we'll see uh, got a question here from Hector Ramirez from Mexico. Uh, 
who says, how much blame do you give Danny Ainge uh, for the Kevin Durant trade not coming to a conclusion because of what the Jazz got from Rudy to the Wolves? Uh, I, I think Danny kind of broke the league for a few minutes there because it, owners see the, what the Utah Jazz got what? They got who? They got all those unprotected pit. Really? For Rudy Gobert? Okay. And I think certainly Brooklyn had a, a, a moment where they were like, well, we can get that. For Kevin Durant, no matter where he is in his career, we can get close to that. So I think, yeah, Danny Hange in, in Utah kind of breaking the league and saying, oh, oh, the asking price is three unprotected picks plus two unprotected pick swaps. Uh, pick swaps are unprotected anyway. But So who wants to give up their trade? Uh, I'm sorry, their draft uh, their drafts for five straight years. Who wants to do that for anybody? It's hard to do that. Cleveland is taking a big risk doing that for Donovan Mitchell. Minnesota's doing uh, a bit, has a big risk doing this for Rudy Gobert. I think there are some teams who, and I think the Knicks fall into this where they said, okay, if you want RJ Barrett, we're not giving you all the picks as well. We'll give you two unprotected picks, and you're not getting pick swaps. It's R.J. Barrett who's really good and two unprotected picks, and that's it. You can't have all of this and that. And Danny Ainge is like, no, I do want all of this and that, and so I'm going to get that. And if you don't want to get that, that's fine. I got somebody else who can do it. And the Knicks go, okay, yeah, all right. C call us back. Call us back when you go to your other wherever, and, and we can go back to talking. And he goes to Cleveland and says, yeah, give me everything. And they say, yes, <laughs> that's it. So uh, I think Ainge and his moves have, have certainly impacted the Kevin Durant stuff. And I think Kevin Durant saw that. Everybody saw that. They know that they can't, they can't, they can't manipulate things the way they wanted to manipulate them. So yeah, Danny Ainge basically kept Kevin Durant in, in Brooklyn. I think he had a big hand in that. Uh, and I think other teams were unwilling to to do some of the things that these these teams like Cleveland and Minnesota, who were in, hey, I got to take a big swing to uh, to make our team contenders. They weren't willing to do what those two teams did. Uh, another Danny Ainge question plus advice advice for people coming over for the first time to Boston to watch a Celtics game. That's coming up next. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. How about making Locked On NBA your second listen? I host on Wednesdays with Jake Madison of Locked On Pelicans. It's a fun show. We have a lot of fun doing it. Rotating hosts all week long. So check it out. Get up to date. Uh, rumors, news, everything in 30 minutes every day with Locked On NBA. Find it wherever you found Locked On Celtics, even on YouTube. Both shows are on YouTube. Let's wrap up the mailbag. Dustin wants to know, when it comes to the ridiculous amount of pits, picks that the Utah Jazz have uh, after the Gobert and Mitchell trades, how likely is it Danny Ainge ends up stuck with too many of those picks? How, have we heard this before? Have we heard this? Uh, Danny Ainge has too many picks before? He's gotten burned by it before. Remember the Gershon Yeboselli selection? That was a pick that uh, should not have been made at that point. It was a reach, but the Celtics needed in the first round to uh, to get a draft and stash. And because they they needed to do the draft and stash, they drafted him uh, ahead of the uh ahead of other players now i don't know who else they could have gotten in fact let me quickly as i people on youtube can probably see me looking this up let me look at the quick i don't remember the 2016 nba draft quite as well as i should but yabu uh after yabu malik beasley karis lavert um burkan korkmaz pascal siakam dejounte murray 
Uh, Ivica Zubac, Malcolm Brogdon's in that draft. Jeez. <laughs> there's there's a lot of uh yeah, there are a lot of players here. Now, hindsight being 2020, I'm sure the Celtics would have chosen a different path. They chose Yabu because they had too many picks. The Celtics picked Jalen Brown in that draft. They picked Yabu in that draft. They picked Ante Zizic in that draft. They picked Daytona Davis. They picked uh, some other dude whose name I can't pronounce. They they picked Demetrius Jackson. I mean, they had a ton of picks. Uh, Abdel Nader is in that. Jeez, man, all of this in the 2016 draft. Wow. The Celtics had too many picks. They, they, they could get stuck. And this is one of the bargaining chips that a team has. And this is, I, I wonder, honestly, it's a great question because I really wonder what Danny Ainge learned from having too many picks with Boston. What's he going to do with all of those picks? Is he going to start packaging those things? Is he going to start consolidating? Is he going to go two for one? Is he going to trade this pick and that pick to get a better pick somehow? Is he going to trade these picks for a player? Uh, how, how is he going to manage all of these picks? Is, what's, what picks is, is he going to make? What picks will he trade? How is he going to manage all of that? He, I think he miss, he had some missteps the first time around. I, I think this time it'll be interesting to see what lessons he learned. But as a, if I'm an opposing GM and I'm, I'm negotiating with him and he says, Oh no, I'll make all, I'll make all these picks. I'll say, good. I dare you. I dare you to draft 40 guys for a 15 man roster. Go ahead. It's not, it's not feasible. It's not a, it's not a plausible solution. So let's, let's get down to business. I I've said this before though. Danny Ainge, I think people forget how competitive Danny Ainge is. Danny Ainge was like all state in, in Oregon, uh, in basketball, I think baseball, football, like three, was he a three sport all state guy? He was like one of Oregon's greatest athletes of all time. Super, super competitive guy, ha, you know, reached the ma majors in, in baseball before he came over to the NBA. Super competitive guy. He doesn't want to lose. He doesn't like to lose trades. Uh, he doesn't just want to win trades. He wants to dominate trades. So I wonder, I do wonder how he's going to manage all of that, uh, all of those draft assets. I think, I think that there may have been lessons learned in Boston and, and he it'd be interesting to see how they're applied. All right, let's move on. Uh, Justina says, Hey, my husband and I are coming over from the UK in November to watch the Celtics. What else should we do to have a great Celtics experience aside from watching the game? Is there a hangout spot merch shop that we should visit? So, this is actually one of the most common questions I get. One of the most asked questions of me is, hey, first time coming to Boston, what should I do? So my, my first response is always, uh, it, I mean, the answer is, is very fluid. There are, Boston's small, so what are you looking for to eat? There, there are plenty of great restaurants around. I can't recommend a million of them. Uh, the North end is always a popular place. Italian food, uh, in the North end, uh, is, is always good. Uh, my friend Jen Royal owns table, uh, in North, in the North end. And that is a very unique experience where it's a fa family style. So two people go in, it's a prefix dinner. You go on in. She didn't pay me to say this. She doesn't even know that I'm saying this, but um, it's a very unique experience because you just sit down at a long table and you have to talk to the other people at the table. So it's a it's a very interesting kind of dynamic, and it really makes for a fun kind of experience there. So, uh, but the North End is obviously a place. There's a, there's a lot. You know, people do the Freedom Trail. People do uh, whatever. But like I said, Boston is small. My my suggestion for Boston is you walk around. Just walk, um, get yourself a map and, and walk through the garden in the public, the public garden and walk down Newburgh street and walk down Boylston street and get yourself to Kenmore square and, and just kind of look at the city and enjoy the city. Now there's a lot more to Boston, but for a tourist, 
that's that's kind of where you want to go. Celtics wise, they did a great job building around the garden. There are bars across the street. If you walk down the street um, across from the garden, there's probably five or six bars. A few of them shut down. A few of the, the, the real great ones, the fours, unfortunately, shut down. But there are a few bars down there that are, are worth checking out before the game. Lots of Celtics fans out there. Uh, plenty of options. On the block, uh, There's uh, there are a lot of options uh, down Causeway. Uh, they Like I said, they built up a lot of stuff. There's a, not a food court, but uh, just I forget what it's called. But whatever. It's, it's there, right there. You can go. There's a ton of options. You can sit. There's outdoor seating. Uh, I would, I just recommend just kind of walking around there. There's no, there's no singular experience that you're going to have. I think in Boston that, uh, I'm going to say, you got to do this because it's different, you know, Quincy market, uh, that area there, get to the water, maybe get on a boat. I would say, go to the YouTube comments. If anybody can maybe throw some suggestions in the comments, Put in your suggestions. Put in where you'd want to go. Uh, should rent a car if you, depending on how long you're going to go uh, to Boston, rent a car and drive up to New Hampshire or to Maine and enjoy the coast. Uh, there's a lot. It's so scenic around here. It's so great. So go to the YouTube page. People leave your suggestions in the comments. I'd love to see some more. Uh, but simply walk around. Uh, I know sometimes it's the winter. You know, it's the middle of winter and it's kind of hard to hard to walk around so you want to pick out some other destinations but uh boston is a great walking city it's a great walking city um and i would recommend doing that uh dirk asks uh belgium just lost to greece uh they play a rematch on november 13th what are the odds that yas and tenta cooper would be participating and second would you have any news on tatum signature shoes uh, I don't have any news on Tatum signature shoes, but he is getting a Jordan brand signature sneaker, the the Tatum one, which uh, I'm very interested in seeing. The Jordan brand, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a sneaker guy, not as much as I used to be, but uh, I do have a wall, multiple racks of sneakers that I'm looking at right now. Uh, I do enjoy them. Jordan Brand has been interesting with his signature sneakers. I don't understand the kind of like you're already named after a player. So the Jordan Tatum one is interesting. Um, but Jordan's the the brand name as well. So but they stick to they stick to a certain design. The Jordan side of Nike is, you know, I I'm, I'm I do think they need some work, but It'd be. I'm very curious to see what his signature shoe uh, looks like. As for Giannis, no, November 13th, he's he's playing in the NBA. The when they when they play around, anytime one of these international players is back, he's not leaving the Bucks to go play Belgium. So that's that's not. And finally, Brandon Brandon B says, "Let's go, son." Note to the WNBA: Do not get in this team's face. A fired up Dewana Browner is scary. That's it. No question. Uh, WNBA, uh, Connecticut Sun lost game one to the Las Vegas Aces by three. Tough, tough loss. Uh, Las Vegas is good. Uh, Asia Wilson is good. Um, I'm I'm excited to be going to game three. I'm in, in, you know, in Connecticut when they come back for game three. Hopefully, the series is tied at one. I think I think Dewana Brown Dewana Bonner is is probably the key. They almost lost to Chicago. They were down big in the fourth quarter, down by what six, eight points with a few minutes to go. And Bonner was having a terrible game. And then she woke up. There was a play there with um uh Kalia Copper. And all of a sudden. Bonner woke up and the the, the sun r- ran off a, a big run. It was an awesome comeback to get to the WNBA finals. So, yeah, Dewana Brown, De- Dewana Brown, Bonner. Wow, why can't I say Bonner? Dewana Bonner. Does anybody else have that problem? You want? I want to say Dewana Bronner, but it's Bonner. 
uh, if she's having a, a good game, then forget it. It doesn't matter what a lot of other players there are, are doing, but obviously John Quill Jones and uh, I like Natisha Heideman. She's probably my favorite. Um, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited about the, the sun and, and hopefully they can come, come back to Connecticut and look, I'm not saying they're going to win three in a row, but in being down Oh one in a best of five is tough, but I'm excited. I'm excited. And I, I, you know, I get some blowback from people on Twitter when I talk about the WNBA, however briefly I talk about it. Uh, but look, it's, it's fun. It's good basketball. I like basketball. I'm a basketball person. I'm doing a basketball podcast, spending three minutes, five minutes talking about basketball. that's currently going on, uh, especially the WNBA finals where I like the style of basketball. And here's the thing. If you're still listening and you're anti WNBA, that's fine. I'm not telling you to watch, but I am going to tell you that it's probably different than what you saw that made you think you don't like it. I'm just saying it's this, it's different. The speed, the, the skill, it's different. It's grown a lot in, you know, a quarter century. So, but whatever, I enjoy it. I hope you enjoy it too. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. I uh, thank you for watching. I thank you for listening. And I thank you for being a subscriber. Again, I'm doing a Wednesday show. I'm doing a Friday show. And then next week, five days a week, I'm going back to the daily grind next week. Let's do it. Let's get back into things. So subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Subscribe on YouTube. Comment on YouTube. Like I said before, leave your comments about things you like to do in Boston for people who are coming to visit for the first time. Uh, and if you are a subscriber, share the podcast. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell everybody. They should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast.